Welcome to writing video one. We are going to be writing a response to fiction in this lesson. A response to fiction gives your thoughts about and your reactions to a story. What makes a great response to fiction? It begins by naming the title and the author that you're responding to and clearly states your opinion about the story. It also gives reasons for your opinion, including details and examples from the story you're responding to. It also concludes with a restatement of your opinion to close the piece. Let's look at the writing model um, on your screen. So this is a response to the book Charlotte's Web. We're going to note how the writer states her overall opinion of the book and gives details and examples to support that opinion. Charlotte's Web by E.B. White is a wonderful story about a most unusual spider. I couldn't put the book down. Okay, there is her opinion right off the bat. She names the title of the book, the author, and she tells us her opinion about the story. Now we're going to have our details and examples. The story tells about Wilbur the pig and how a little girl named Fern and a spider named Charlotte work together to save Wilbur from being killed for meat. It's clear that Fern loves animals. This story is fun to read because the animals are smarter than the people. Charlotte starts weaving words in her web to describe Wilbur. People come from all around to see this incredible pig. Then Mr. Zuckerman, who owns the farm, sees the words in Charlotte's web. Eventually, Wilbur ends up at the county fair. What happens there is exciting, surprising, and a little sad, too. The story of Charlotte and Wilbur is like nothing I've ever read before. It captured my imagination. I loved reading this book. So we see that we have the story's main problem. Okay, is that they need to save the pig. All right. Then we have precise language telling more about the characters and the events throughout this piece. We have a details and examples, too, on what um, and why she couldn't put this book down. Notice she doesn't give away the ending. She just tells us and gives us a little taste for how she felt um, the, um, <clears throat> how she felt about um, what happened at the end of the story. So good writers use precise language and careful word choice so that readers can better understand their writing. Okay, um, the author uses precise language um, in The Girl Who Liked Sp Love Spiders, like tricky and greedy, to give the reader a clearer picture of what the character Anansi could be like. He also provides an example from one of the Anansi folktales to support the point. Now, as you write, you should pause and ask yourself if you can change some words and phrases to use some more precise language and be more clearly um, communicating your ideas to your readers. So, review the story, The Girl Who Loves Spiders, and look for examples of how the author uses precise language examples and details. Then we're going to go to work working on word choice in your reader's notebook. Turn to page 347. We're going to practice using precise language. As you describe character setting and plot in your response, choose clear exact words to show the reader clearly the features of the story. You're going to list three or more details that you might use to express your opinion about the following parts of a story that you've read recently. Include interesting word choice. You can see up here that the topic was characters, and some of the details from the story that this person read were fascinating, realistic, sympathetic, and evil. Those are all details that describe the characters. So you're going to look for those exact and precise language um, details for a place, a time, an event, and an ending in a story that you've read recently.